but I'm going to tell you with pretty hardcore certainty here. Um, University of Memphis and the staff, the football staff, they knew this was going to happen. Yep. And to be honest with you, they were more than okay with it. Uh, I have heard some rumblings that I'm not going to just spill out here that they were kind of out on him by the end of the whole thing. Um, I don't know what transpired in the recruiting process fully. I don't know what happened on the official visit fully, but I do have an understanding that Memphis didn't feel like he fit the culture by the end of the entire recruiting process. And I know people are going to probably deep sigh at this, but I'm telling you from a position of having some knowledge as to what happened down the stretch of this recruitment, the university of Memphis and that football staff did really not, they didn't really want Peyton Joseph on campus. It felt like by the end of this whole thing. Right. And I, I, I don't, you know, (laughs) he ends up at Florida state. They're fine with that. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Hopefully, you can find more interior offensive linemen out there that fit your culture. But it feels like the culture they're trying to build—they want high character guys that they trust in. And even if you're a four or five star guy, if you do something that, you know, uh, whatever it may be, it your, brings your fit culture wise into question. Right. They tend to cut ties with that person, and I think Peyton Joseph is an example of that. Talk to me about how. Um, a coach and not just the university of Memphis coach, but a coach in general, like how do you weigh that balance of wanting to accumulate the best talent possible, but also not sacrificing the culture? Right. It's that's, that's such a tough balance, man. And you just have to know you, I think there, there are moments with coaches I've been with, you know, Justin Fuente and Mike Norvell in particular, they take some questionable character guys to try to get some talent on the roster and they try to manage it as best as possible. Oh, you know, you need to be friends with this guy. You need to check in with us every week, whatever it may be. But I think there's some coaches out there that just sort of get into this point where if you stray away from the culture they're trying to build too far, they either won't have you or they're kick, they'll kick you off the team in a, in a quickness. And I, I tend to think, like, I don't know if Ryan – is the type of coach that bends the knee or is willing to sacrifice any level of culture to bring a guy in um, no matter sort of where they stand on the team. Now, some people could view that as a negative, right? Because there's been a lot of good coaches that have kept guys on because of their talent, even though they've made some questionable decisions. Right. But I, I tend to, you know, I think it's a high character thing and I think it just shows character within a football facility to, to not, bend the knee to anybody even if they're the most talented guy on campus right if they do wrong they do wrong and they should feel the consequences of that and i think that's where this memphis football culture is at this current moment uh you know there there could be some examples you'll see here relatively soon where guys are not on the roster that you thought were going to be on the roster and i think that has to do with a culture that's built and the culture that that he wants ryan this whole staff that they want to maintain yeah, I mean, you 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 heard um, uh, Dan Hurley talk about that at the end of the season this year, right? Where he talked about culture and fit and recruiting transfer portal players, and he said basically that one player can kill a roster, can kill yeah. a locker room. Um, now, basketball is different from football, obviously, because there's far fewer guys on the team um, in a basketball program. So there's you know whatever cancer a lot more likely for one more one bad apple to spoil the bunch right 100 percent. but um i can appreciate the level of of kind of an unwillingness to like you the phrase you used bend the knee to 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 what is like this guy is highly ranked right but if you are coming to the university or to whatever school you are visiting and you were doing things that are outside of the character of it's like red flags, right? Like, yeah. like you go on a, you go on a, a date with somebody, you're going to be the best version of yourself you can possibly be. Right. And so if you are, you want to put your best foot forward. And so if you are seeing some things, if it took getting this kid on campus and saying, there's just some things that maybe um, we see, we view as problems that we don't see as something that we can, work towards trying to fix or even develop through whatever it may be. Right. There's a, there's a level of, of 
an unwillingness to say, you know what, we're going to let those things slide. Like, is the juice worth the squeeze, yeah. man? It's just you have to decide that for yourself. And there's there's different ways of looking at it. You know, like I said already, I've had I had two coaches that were willing to bring on some questionable characters to try to get the good end result. It feels like Ryan's not quite there. And I, I think you see it sort of percolating through the whole program because football is just one aspect of what they sort of preach over there. Like they right. have job, you know, right. Right. I went over there for a damn job fair and other things like that. Like they just, they have yeah. these, they do a lot of community outreach, yeah. things like that. They, the, the GPA, I don't know if you've seen that, like that's stressed over there. Yeah. That's why I think Ryan, as much as like the, the fan base has this, weird taste in their mouth and there seems to be some polarizing thoughts on ryan as the coach going forward and what he'll ultimately be i think the people behind the scenes at the university yeah. of memphis i think they love ryan <laughs> and what and what, sort of what he stands for I and agree. i think people need to understand that and I, this is not me like trying to be a homer and oh culture i know how ridiculous of a buzzword that is all the time right but i do think that the people behind the scenes the real decision makers appreciate what is being done. And that's why a lot of that FedEx money gets earmarked for football. You ask for help, you get it. You know, it doesn't seem like he's been on a ridiculous hot seat this entire time. That's why you see some of these things and the conversation not really come to fruition about, you know, after those two, six and six seasons, him getting fired, that type of thing. Well, but, I tell you, I tell you, it, it excites me. Cause I, I, as somebody who has been able to cover the Memphis football program since 2019, Ryan Silverfield deserves good things to happen to him. And so this is good. Like this is where like the, the level of consistency, the level of, of even the, 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 the extension he got on his contract, the, um, the, the opportunity to play in the college football playoffs, all those kinds right. of things. Those are things that are turning in his favor. And I just go, I'm, I'm happy that things yeah. are turning in his favor, right? That yeah, there and I know, I know. Coming. Honestly, people are going to listen to this and be like, "Kenny, you and Gabe sound like the biggest homers ever." Whatever. But when you peek behind the curtain, you'll see the exact same thing, man. It's you can it's, choose not it's, to like what it. I'm saying. Actually, ring it holds very true to what that what that culture and what that what that uh, program is being run like right now. That's this you is can, how the, everything we're saying. I'm telling you is very truthful about the way things are operating over there. I'm not sure. necessarily thinking – I'm not saying that that's going to end in a college football playoff, um, you know, bid by any stretch of the imagination, but they are they are running that thing with a nice, stable foundation, and they have their day-in, day-out, non-negotiables. It's understood right. what is going on over at that over at that place right now. 